Good morning, welcome to Collective Academy. Super excited to talk about Power BI licensing concepts today. We're gonna to be reviewing the following types of licensing. So Power BI Free, Power BI Pro, Power BI Premium. So the three um, types of premium SKUs we're gonna be talking about are the P SKUs, the EM SKUs, and then um, the semi-new Power BI Premium per user, which just came out this year. Um, then we have Power BI Report Server, and last but not least, Power BI Embedded. So again, anytime you have any questions, please let me know, and we'll go ahead and get those answered for you. So the first, um, the first license concept that we're going to talk about is Power BI Free. If you wanted to use Power BI just for yourself, and let's say you had your own finances, or I've had a I've had a client who actually was a part of a beer club, and he actually monitored all the different types of beers that he's drank from different microbreweries. Um, he actually used his own spreadsheet to create his own report and he used, he used Power BI Free for that. As you can see on here, there's a few things you can and can't do with it. There's no direct query option for Power BI Free. You can only do one refresh per day. You cannot share with Power BI Free. Power BI Free is meant for you and you alone. It's it's more so for, you know, if you're just doing your own ad hoc analysis, you're not sharing with anyone really irrelevant data throughout the organization. Now, the other use case for free is where we actually uh, get into the Power BI premium which we'll dive into here in a few moments so the most common power bi um, license is the power bi pro and this um this allows you to basically share and collaborate with all your end users inside of the power bi service it allows you to publish reports up to the power bi service um, your maximum data set size is one gig um, the maximum storage per user is 10 gig. You can only refresh your data set up to eight times per day. That's one of the main differences between the Power BI Pro and the Power BI Premium. Um, it is only $10 per month per user. That is an extremely effective cost point. It is included with Office 365 E5 licensing. So if you have E5, you don't need to do this $10 per month per user because you already have it. You know, all users, I think one of the other main points I always like to, to point out is anyone that wants to see or view your report. So if I create a report and I want to share it with Audrey and Chloe, Audrey and Chloe both need to have a Power BI Pro license. There's no way to get around that unless you kind of go into some of these other SKUs that we've talked about. But if they actually want to view that report, they do need a pro license, which is that $10 per month per user. OK, so we're going to go into the Power BI Premium SKUs. So the Power BI Premium SKUs, um, this is basically what premium pretty well boils down to is that it is dedicated capacity. Um, so instead of pooling all of your storage into the into the cloud inside of Microsoft with everyone else's, this is your own dedicated dedicated you know instance so it's your own storage um, that you're utilizing for for the p SKUs. this is pretty well for large enterprise organizations and a lot a pretty well a rule of thumb is we say if you don't have at least 500 users you're probably not suitable for power bi premium now there are use cases where you may want to have power bi premium if you have less than 500 users maybe you have uh, extremely large data sets you need that dedicated capacity you want to take advantage of the the storage limits where you can actually go up to a terabyte maybe your data set size needs to go above one gig with the pro so you need to have you need to utilize this 10 gigabyte licensing you may also be interested in going into the uh, data refresh over eight times per day. So with Power BI Premium, you can actually go, you can actually refresh your data up to 48 times per day. And that's if you're using an import method with your with your, um, with your your reports. If it's direct query, that's always directly connected to your database. But if you're doing that refresh with, a, with that import method, you can do it 48 times per day. It also gives you some other features like um, AI and ML, cognitive services, um, you can actually produce paginated reports, um, deployment pipelines are available, and then automatic page refresh is another uh, very, it's, it's another great feature um, that's available if you are using certain write back tools as well. So we, we see that uh, useful whenever, whenever we're doing budgeting and forecasting within a premium SKU. Um, the other thing that you actually do get with Power BI Premium is, is report server. Uh, and we'll go into that here um, in, the, in a few moments as well. So I just want to do a quick scenario. So with Power BI Premium, um, you still need Power BI Pro. So even though you have um, a premium account, you still need Pro in order to, to publish. 
So I may purchase my premium SKU, P1 SKU, which is at a minimum of $5,000 per month. I still need to have a set of users to actually publish my reports to my to my workspaces. So for example, you know, Audrey and Chloe may be viewers in my Power BI Premium um, account. However, I, I will have a pro account so that I can actually author and then publish my reports up to the Power BI service. So another, th another thing I mentioned earlier is you can have free, you can use the free users just to view those Power BI reports inside of the Power BI workspaces with Power BI Premium, um, same instance. So Audrey and Chloe and the rest of my organization can have free, can use the free SKU of Power BI um, but you'll still need that pro license in order to publish that up and, and maintain those workspaces inside of your Power BI service tenant. So the other type of premium SKU I'm going to talk about today is the EM SKU. And the EM SKU has three SKUs. It's EM one through three. And this is for organizational embedding. And what that basically means is that I can embed my Power BI reports within a Teams or a SharePoint site. All of the reports are still published up to the Power BI service, so they all still live in the Power BI service. However, your end users are going to consume those reports from within um, SharePoint or from within Microsoft Teams. Um, those end users within Teams or SharePoint do not need to have a, a Power BI license. Uh, they can just have a Power BI free license, so they don't need the pro. However, who, whoever is you know, publishing the reports or maintaining those reports inside of the Power BI service, they still will require that pro license in order to, you know, publish and maintain those, maintain those reports. So we see a lot of clients utilizing this. It, and again, it's all about what your company's vision, deployment vision is. If you want everybody to maintain, you know, their, their access with their documents and where everything lives with inside of SharePoint or with inside of Teams. Uh, we see a lot of organizations moving down that path, especially with the uh, the recent, you know, many updates to Microsoft Teams that Microsoft has been coming out with. So that is the EMSKU. It's pretty straightforward. The next premium offering that I'd like to talk about is Power BI Premium per user. And this is relatively new. This is actually $20 per month per user. In order to um, access the workspace that has been assigned to a premium per user um, as a premium per user workspace, you do need to have a user license for that to happen. So the one, the main thing to know about Power BI Premium per user is in order to access content published in the premium per user workspace, you would need a premium per user license, which is $20 per month. So if we want to look at some quick comparisons between the, the per capacity as per as the per user, here are the main differences. So basically, here's what you don't get with per user and here's what you get with the per capacity. At the end of the day, you're still getting all of the main features of you know, a premium. So you still get the XMLA endpoint connectivity, you get the AI capabilities, um, the, the paginated reports, the refresh, um, the deployment pipelines. But some of the things you don't get are the, um, you don't get Power BI report on premises, which is, uh, which is report server. Um, you don't have that, you know, that actual dedicated capacity on the per capacity limits. So there's a few di differences there. Um, but end of the day, you do get a lot of the same capabilities as what as what the premium capacity licensing is. A um, few things that, like I like I had already mentioned is more focused on the sharing content. So who can see what? So this table really pretty well breaks down what your end users can see and what they cannot see. Um, so again, if you have a pro, can you see the premium per user? No, premium per user can basically access everything. And then the premium per capacity users, no named licenses is the only, basically if you have a free version, um, you can only have access if you have the premium per capacity. So the other type of premium um, offering is what we would call Power BI report server. So this is included with Power BI Premium. So if you're paying the $5,000 per month on the, one of the P SKUs, um, P1 through P5, 
you do have this does come with it this does come with um, that that premium offering it can be purchased separately so we do have some clients that you know they do have um, very important inf critical information that cannot leave on premise so in that instance they have purchased power bi report server um, through something called sql server software assurance and that's with SQL Server Enterprise Edition. So you need to have SQL Server Enterprise Edition and then SQL, and then you would purchase software assurance with that. And that is approximately $40,000 and it expires after two years. So after every, every two years, you would have to re-up that, um, that, that, that purchase for software assurance. Um, you do need a Power BI Pro license to publish to the, to the report server. So you'll still need that Pro license. So there's no really no way to get around Pro. If you're gonna be authoring or publishing reports, you still need a pro license. Uh, however, the viewers of those reports do not require a license. So if you know if I if I just need to to analyze my data, I'm a business analyst inside the organization. I don't need a pro license. Um, I can just view that. But if I'm a business analyst who's actually developing and then publishing, I still need that pro license for Report Server. The last license that we're going to be talking about here today is something called Power BI Embedded. And Power BI Embedded um, is, is uh, licensed through something called the A SKUs. Um, that's A one through five, and this is all handled through Microsoft Azure. So you would go into the Azure services and then you would configure um, the type of SKU you would need inside of there. And this is meant to basically, this is for uh, ISVs, um, so independent software vendors to embed their Power BI into their existing applications. So we see this uh, with some of our clients that we think that we work with um, that want to come up with a, an analytics software offering for their end users um, within the, within an existing uh, software that they have. Or we we've actually engaged with some others that that feel like hey they specialize in a certain industry and they want to actually provide reporting as a service to their to their end users. So what they'll do is they'll take Power BI and they'll embed that inside of their web application and they more or less are white labeling Power BI. So they're using Power BI as their analytics solution and Power BI Embedded provides them that capability. We also see um, other organizations using Power BI Embedded to you know, deploy their reports throughout the organization as well. So there may be a web application built and they want to actually use that to deploy their reports. That's perfectly fine. Um, there's just a few different, I mean, it's really depending upon what type of solution you're trying to architect. Um, it usually involves Azure Analysis Services, or it can, um, or it usually involves some variation of Power BI Premium to uh, basically create a unified data model that can be, that can be utilized across um, all end users that are accessing that, um, the Power BI reporting. A little bit more complicated architecture, but at the end of the day, um, it is. It can be a very viable solutions for the, for um, organizations that are wanting to provide analytics for their end users. And uh, last but not least, um, the one thing that everybody's always concerned about or has questions about is, is the licensing. So this um, this is just a quick licensing table that uh, you could utilize to actually just see, you know, what is the actual cost? What am I getting with that cost for all of my different premium licensing? The, uh, the pro is straightforward, $10 per month per user. Free is obviously free. Um, and then the premium per user is $20 per month per user, as we mentioned. But this is this table pretty well breaks down the estimated price for um, all the premium capacity SKUs from EM all the way down to your, um, your P to your A's. What's the biggest advantage to upgrade pro to premium per user? Really, it depends upon what you're looking for. Essentially, you're getting all of the features of premium. So if you're looking for AI capabilities, paginated reporting, larger refreshes, you know, a larger model size, if you're looking for deployment pipelines, you get all of these things with that. Uh, those are some of the main features I see that are important. It really depends what your organization is looking to, um, to utilize from that. The Power BI licensing that we that we reviewed today was all the way Power BI free down to the Power BI embedded SKU. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us um, through our website. Always um, always happy to have everybody on here. Always happy to engage with with you and help help you out. Mm -hmm.